hi guys uh welcome back um i decided to do a, a video today because you know i've been giving you guys videos with my hair looking crazy me looking crazy so i was like you know what let me do something decent so i did my hair for you guys see it oh oh i have a little bump there oh but yeah did it just for you guys but, uh, yeah, no. Sorry. Texting my dad. But, um, yeah. I got a lot of feed feedback back. And, um, you know, a lot of people would like to see more sit-down videos of me talking sometimes I don't know what to talk about that's why I do a lot of vlogs but you know this video is going to be mainly about like I guess about me and like me trying to overcome my uh, depression my anxiety well for one I've had anxiety for many 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 years now and um you know i'm i'm going to try my hardest like i really am i'm gonna try to be like an open book so you guys could really know who i am really know you know things but you know to a certain extent but uh but yeah my anxiety had started it appeared and everything once you know my parents had split up it was it was pretty hard I could say it was pretty hard you know I'm not gonna go too much in details with that but it was a hard uh, separation for not just my parents but also for me and my brother uh, especially for me because I was like I think 11 or 12 years old 11 no yeah like 11 12 yeah because it was 11 12 13 14 yeah okay so yeah I was pretty young and my brother was he was a baby still so you know I've majority of my younger years I was you know with both my parents so it was hard to see you know what I consider you know a happy family like you know having both my parents with me and you know now not having that it was you know it was pretty hard for me it was really hard for me to adjust to it and to just you know this new life and as you guys some of you guys know um my family is from new york so we moved to salem when I was six months, my mom moved to Salem when I was six months years old, and um, she, you know, moved over there for a better life for me and for her, and all her family was here. I grew up with my father's side of the family, so all her family was here, and when the separation happened, you know, she wanted to move back to where her mom was, my grandmother, and her family mainly was at the time I couldn't stand it because I'm like why you know I've been here almost my whole life like why should you know I have to go over there so yeah okay so I was like okay it was seventh and eighth grade so I was like 13 12 13 okay yeah yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah I was like 12 12 going on 13 one of those ages anyways but um you know i was here i was in salem majority of my life and um at the time i was very selfish because i'm like you know why should we move to new york like why do we have to go so far when all i know is salem i used to you know come to new york here and there especially in the summertime my grandmother used to uh bring me here to well, my mom used to bring me over here, and I used to spend most 
majority of the summertime with my grandmother here. But, like, to live, I felt like it was going to be completely different. So, you know, a lot of things happened in between. And I really had to, you know, grow up at that age. I had to really grow up and, you know, be there for my little brother because, you know, I wouldn't... I was... Let's say I was mature for my age, so I seen a lot more than what I ever, you know, would want my brother to see. And my anxiety, whoa, my hair is like really frizzy, it's bad. Anyways, so, you know, I would never want my little brother to see stuff like that because he was so young. But um, I, my parents, you know, it was court issues and stuff like that, and it was... It was pretty, pretty hard for me to, like, to deal with that and stuff. And, you know, I wouldn't ever want to go back to that. It's just, it was really bad. Oh, my eyes are water. But, yeah, like, it was, my anxiety had started there into, I was in eighth grade. And I remember, you know, with the court issues and everything, I remember I had asked my mom, like, you know, could I at least finish eighth grade here with my friends and I could start fresh for high school and everything in New York. And, um, you know, they agreed to it and everything. And because of that, you know, it was just me, my dad, and my brother living together. So my mom had left already, and it was just really hard, you know, because I had to grow up I had to you know do the um cleaning in the house I had to be the woman in the house and so that just that was a lot of pressure for me and do I blame my parents for it no I you know I don't blame my parents you know at the time yes I did but you know now I just look back at it and it's just like you know because of everything that happened to me the way I am now, the Chelsea that I am now, I could consider myself very strong. Like, I'm, I'm very strong for what I've gone through and everything. I'm very, very strong. And listen, I everything that has happened to me before, like, in my past, has made me a better person today. And you go through things all the time. Oh, why do I always cry? Jesus. I, you know, you go through things and it, in the long run, it will make you better and it makes you stronger. And that's how I feel. Like, I've, I have a shell. Like, I have a hard shell now. Like, I, I'm strong. So, I had to, you know, be basically like a, a mom to my brother and that's why, you know, me and my brother now, we have such a strong bond because of just how we grew up with each other. So, you know, my parents having that issue with my parents and then coming to New York and it was just like, oof, it was like a really big transformation, like really big. Um, But yeah, like, it was hard, you know. High schoolers, you go through a lot. Like, you know, in high school, those four years are like, those four years are a roller coaster. Like, those four years, like, whoo, those four years. That's all I can say is those four years. Like, a lot in those four years, a lot had happened, you know, like, friendship wise, relationship wise, like, just so much happen and i could go if you guys really want me to like go into details and more about that you just you know let me know but a lot went a lot in high school it was just it was a lot you know and you know, my anxiety was it was just a roller coaster and um once i graduated it was just like you know holy crap like holy crap you're a big girl now like you have to you're in the real world like you're you're not in high school anymore like you're going to college you have to work now like a lot like it was whoo it was a lot
<laughs> a lot. <laughs> uh, I had taken a, uh, I actually took a semester off because, like, I had, I wanted this, this is, I wanted to go to, uh, to one of my dream schools, uh, oh my god, what is it called, Culinary Institute of America, I really, like, that was my dream, dream school, like, I really wanted to go to that school, and, um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to go, so, my second choice was, if I didn't go like dorming my second choice was going to be city tech but it was like far because it's in brooklyn so i'm like yeah no i'm just gonna take a semester off i'm gonna work Ooh, excuse me and i'm gonna see you know what i want to do so in the midst of that you know both my parents they started seeing new people and um at the time, I was not getting along well with the one that was with my mom, a man that was with my mom. It was very difficult because, you know, he tried to be a role that he honestly didn't have to. But it was just, it was just a lot. Like, it was... It took a big uh, toll on our relationship, my relationship with my mom. It was very unhealthy. Um, it was to a point where I had to step out and, you know, live with my grandmother for a couple of months just so, you know, we needed to separate from each other just for a while because it is just it was getting really bad and I don't you know I don't ever want to like my mom is my mom you know like my mom is my mom and for us to be the way we were it was very very unhealthy and I just never wanted to get to a point where I couldn't I couldn't stand my mom and like I didn't want to hate her that's one thing I never wanted to do is hate her because you know at the end of the day that's my mom you know why would I you know why would I ever want to hate her so I took it upon myself to step out and live with my grandmother because it was just very unhealthy and I didn't want my brother to see that and since I'm the oldest I had to play you know a role where he had to look up to me and I didn't want him to think that it's acceptable to be to for me to speak the way I was speaking to my mom and stuff like I didn't want him to think that that's okay he could do it as well so I stepped out and that's when I had taken the semester off and we decided for me, it was best for me to probably dorm, you know, see how it goes. So my mom had found Monroe College in New Rochelle, and we, I went to go check it out, you know, and I ended up dorming, and, you know, at first, it was hard for me because I was like, whoa, like I wasn't far from home, but I was far enough and who I was really like I would come home all the weekends and at that time I had a boyfriend so I would want to come home and stuff like that after that uh an old friend of mine had started attending uh Monroe College with me we were dorming together so that was like the best it was like a four it was supposed to be a four bedroom like for four people and it ended up being just us two so we had double beds we hooked it up in that room that room was the best three seven three seventeen room three seventeen yep <laughs> at the third floor in gaddy that was in that room that room was adventurous but um 
you know, I had met the love of my life, Daz. I had met him in Monroe College, for those that know. I met him there. You know, uh, so I feel like I'm so out of topic, but listen, hey, I don't care. But, you know, yeah, so all that happened and everything. And then recently, within this year, like, I'm not going to say, you know, my anxiety and the way I felt was gone because it was never gone. It was, it had appeared here and there, here and there. And another reason why I stepped out of school as well and I stopped going to school was not only just because, you know, I was getting bigger, um, you know, with my belly when I was pregnant. Not that I was getting bigger, but I felt like it was just so much. I felt really overwhelmed because I worked as a supervisor and I had class so early, so I came home sometimes at 2, 3 in the morning to wake up at 8 o'clock to go to class, to do homework, to go to work. It was just so much for me, and I said, you know what, I need to, I need to stop for a second, like, I need to think, I need to stop, you know, I'm pregnant, I have, I had so much going on, so my anxiety was off the roof, and I was like, you know, this can't be healthy for me or for my baby so I had to you know relax and I took time off of school took time off of school but I still continued to work because I needed money I had to you know I didn't have just myself to provide anymore I had to get stuff and save up money because I would have to be going off of matern um, to maternity leave and then recently, this past year, you know, I had my beautiful princess that just, she just made a lot of things go away, which is so amazing. Um, could I say my pregnancy, my, my pregnancy was, it was beautiful. You know, I had my complications, but it was just so beautiful. Uh, my labor was it was hard my labor was hard like it was difficult and I actually felt a certain way because I felt like it was my fault that I wanted an epidural but then it's not my fault because honestly who could stand that pain like that pain is like no other I thought I was strong enough I was like yeah I could wing it out natural birth but it was just like, it was to a point that I was like, no, I can't. Like, I just can't. I can't spend the whole day doing this. And for me to, the epidural is so scary that if one little thing, like, that's it. You could be paralyzed. So, I was so scared. Like, I feared a lot. And to just think that because I wanted an epidural, you know, the baby's heart rate went down. So I, it was just a lot for me because I was just like, in a way it was kind of traumatizing because it's like, I, because of the epidural, I could have, you know, not had my daughter. Like if the nurse wasn't there checking it, Milani maybe could have not been here, you know? Like a lot of things like that run into my head and it's just like, ugh, like why, 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 why? And then that year but before that happened i'm sorry guys but before that happened in september i had lost my aunt tia Kukusa. we were in like when i would come here like when my mom and i would come here to down to new york to visit and stuff like we would always go visit her like she was just that aunt that she was the aunt with the big old arms, and when she hugged you, like, it was just that she would squeeze you, but it just felt so amazing, because it's just, like, she was just so warm and just such a beautiful soul and so, like, caring, and you had to say yes, that you were thirsty, pretend like you was thirsty, because she would ask you five minutes later, like, are you thirsty now? 
are you thirsty now like or do you want this or do you want that like she was just a, such a loving person and um that took a really big like sh like it was just so much for especially for my mom because that was her favorite aunt so my mom was just like broken that broke her and then Melani's, you know uh, uh labor it was just it was a lot and then october 31st is when you know for those that know me i lost my great grandfather from my dad's side i was true i'm truly 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 blessed to say that you know i have my great grandparents for the rest of, like for my entire life i still have my great grandmother she's up here she's just so <laughs> she's just i treasure every second and every second of every moment i get to spend with her and my great grandfather he passed at 90 years old uh with of cancer and it was just that one that hit me hard because you know i had him my whole life he was I didn't have my grandfather from my dad's side because he had passed away when I was younger. So I considered Papa like my grandfather. And that was just, you know, like, you know, because he was old. So you know he was going to die. But it was just like, you didn't want it to happen. But, I mean, it was a blessing t to say, you know, wow, you know, my great-grandfather lived until 90. Like, not a lot of people could say that. So, he was just, <laughs> he was so little. He looked like Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> he loved to eat. He loved sweets. Oh, he loved sweets. Like, you couldn't, <laughs> he could not see you eating something sweet, like, and that's why I take my baking with so much passion, because that, he was my number one cheerleader, like, <laughs> he will always have, um, I remember I got for Christmas, like, many years ago, uh, the electric spinner, so I had left it over there, he would hide it. Because he didn't want no one to touch it, like, at all. No one could touch it because that was for me. That was mine. He was so uh, hurt when we moved to New York. He would always say that he missed us and everything. And he couldn't wait to see Melani. You know, that hurt me a lot that, you know, Melani never got to meet him face to face. Because he was just so excited. He would always say, mi niña, mi niña, like. When I sent my family pictures, he would just, like, melt. <laughs> he would melt. You know, they got to see each other on FaceTime before he passed. But it's like, for him, it, it would have been even more beautiful for him to, got, like, he would be able to carry her and stuff. And just to see her in person, it's so different. Like, you know... Especially me, like, throughout my pregnancy, like, there was things that he would do that would just, oh, it would irk my soul. And believe it or not, I miss all of it. I miss all of it. And that's why, you know, I'm going to continue doing what I'm going to do with my baking. I'm going to do it all for him because, you know, he was there by my side. He was so happy when... Before I came over here, I was going to um, North Shore Tech, and it's a vocational school, so they had uh, baking, they had culinary arts there. So he was so excited, and every time I would bake, he could not see me in the kitchen. Oh my God, he would sit right in the table with me and just look at me and just watch my whole, my every move, watch to see what I'm doing, and then he would go, oh, excuse me. When, um, like, whatever I would put in the oven, 
he would go and check, see if it's ready. He'll be like, yo, he'll ask me if it's ready or not. He was just, he was a sweet, sweet man. He was just a sweet little old man. Like, people in Salem, he would just pass by and just, you know, say, say hi, hi, papa. So that one, I had tried hard. Like, my family also had tried so hard not to let me go and do depression because, you know, I just had the baby. They didn't want me to go to post uh, post uh, partum depression, so I tried my best, you know, but I felt at peace because I didn't see him on his last days, and the way my family had described it, saying that he looked so skinny, he was just in pain, and in a way, I'm happy. I wasn't able to see that because when I think of him, I think of, you know, a healthy papa, always eating, <laughs> always eating. Like, I see him healthy. You know, I didn't see him sick. So, I th think, God, I didn't have to. And I remember the day of the funeral, I was so nervous and just anxious because I'm like, oh my God, it's gonna look different. And when I seen him there in the casket, he just looked so peaceful. He looked very peaceful. So, you know, I felt at peace because I know that he's in a better place now. He's not hurting anymore. Cause that's just like, I remember going to some, like whenever I would go down there, I would go to some appointments and he was just a joy. Like, he was just a joy in the doctor's office. All his nurses and everything. He was just such a sweetie. So, I try so hard not to go deep into depression. And then in January is when Daz passed away. And that just, like, everything just came crashing down. And... I went into a very, very dark place where I just wanted to stay sitting, sleeping. I didn't want to get up, nothing. I just, I didn't know what to do anymore. Like, it was just so much for me because it was like, what now? What do I do now? Like, I'm 21. I have a three month year old baby. I don't work. Like, what can I do? Like, what? I didn't know. I had no idea. I thank my family for always being on my side and never letting me go down. Like, going down. I thank my daughter because honestly, if I did not have her, I honestly wouldn't know where I would be right right now. Like, she is my sunshine. She's my happiness. Like, because of her, I've gotten so much stronger and I believe and I know that there is a light under every tunnel. So, like, it was to a point that I was like, Chelsea, snap out of it. Snap out of it. Because this is something I know Daz would not want you to do. You know, your family wouldn't want you to do this, Daz, Papa. Nobody wants you to be like this. Like, snap out of it. So, I had put myself in counseling to speak my feelings out to see you know if that would make me feel better because there was times where I would have a smile in my face people are you okay yeah I'm okay and then I could just go into the bathroom take a shower or something and just cry and I felt so alone at times like I had so much people on my side support and everything and I still do but there's times where I feel like I'm by myself. 
so I just had to um, go to counseling like I I needed it I never liked it before but I was like you know what I need this because I can't I can't go to that dark dark place like I need counseling and that's why if you guys have me on social media well on snapchat I um I had said the other day I've seen almost every day a butterfly I see like I always see a butterfly and sometimes I think I'm tripping out because I could be sitting there and I could see it pass by in the window and I'm like oh, did you see that they're like no I'm like like how is it I'm the only one that ever sees this butterfly and I feel like you know those are my guardian angels telling me you know you're getting there and uh, butterflies are special to me because I feel like I'm blooming I'm becoming a new Chelsea I'm becoming a there's there's a new chapter in my life that I'm going to I'm entering now there's a new chapter in my life and I'm just gonna get bigger and stronger from this like I it's gonna I'm gonna bloom like I'm blooming into a butterfly a beautiful beautiful butterfly a strong beautiful butterfly I'm strong I want everyone male female everyone I want you guys to know that you know you guys are never by yourselves never even if you say oh I'm by myself trust me you're never by yourself I had the opportunity to have so many people on my side so much support on my side great energy on my side and that's what I want to give everyone else is great energy and support because why because no one is by themselves no one you have to it has to be inside of you in order for you to grow and to become strong and at 21 years old I could say that I'm strong I'm becoming a strong woman I'm becoming that and you know I'm not afraid to say I went through a dark time in my life and I'm getting to it I'm getting I'm in the tunnel I'm walking I'm walking I see the light I'm walking I'm gonna keep on walking so I see that light. and everyone should see that light. don't ever give up or feel like not today or at times yeah that's okay like I do it sometimes I say why today not today but then I'm like I have to I have to do it not just for myself but I also have to do it for my daughter I have to do it for both of us I have to I have to but uh i'm stuck i really don't know what else to say <laughs> but if you guys you know if you guys did like this video please make sure to give it a thumbs up make sure to subscribe and for all my new subscribers welcome i hope you guys like me <laughs> you guys like me like you know what i talk about because this is you know this is real life like I'm trying my hardest to show you guys my life. Like, this is who I am. This is Chelsea. This is who I am. And if you don't like it, oh, well. I can't change myself for nobody else but for myself. But if make sure you guys turn that notification on because I promise I'm going to have some good videos coming up. I'm trying to give you guys a little bit of everything, you know, but yeah, make sure you guys subscribe, like, and turn your notifications on, and just let me know, like, what else you guys want me to talk about, don't be afraid, like, to, you know, hit me up and ask me stuff, like, like I said, I'm trying my hardest to become an open book for you guys, so 
feel free to ask me whatever you guys want and I you know I'm gonna try to answer it I'm trying to give you guys answers I hope you know this video gave you a little bit of something like a little bit of what I have gone through there's a lot more but I feel like you know I have to build that in order for it to be out and you know but yeah thank you guys um and i'll see you guys soon like i do what i like i do i do i do what i like i do i do i do what i like i do i do i do what i like i do i do